you mean. Um, I guess one thing that was really kind of intrigued me about the the new album in general is is well, one the fact it was it was clearly timed, and mm. it, the, the, just the fact that being such an artist that he created that as a you know, the whole thing is is, is a goodbye. In well, which, uh, which, 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 which when I listen to it again, like the, you know the track Black Star and when I saw the Lazarus video, especially, and you compare to when you checked out the track a few days pre, pre prior and then listen to it again, and suddenly this whole message becomes so clear and vivid, and I think that's, that's pretty a uh, pretty powerful send off, and just shows mm. shows, shows his genius really. Would you go as far to say, right? Because I was thinking about this the other day um, at work. Like, he's been apparently uh, battling this uh, liver cancer, I think it was. It was uh, some form of cancer for the past 18 months. Now, how long ago was the next day released? The next day? Was, um, two years. Three years. Three. It was, even, ah, it was, it was 2014, wasn't it? <clears throat> next day was 20, 2013. Oh, it was 2013, okay. Because one of the things I always wondered about in my mind, I was thinking, why isn't Bowie touring? Why isn't he doing any touring or anything like that? But A, when I was thinking about it at the time, he didn't need to. Mm. And B, he's made he's made both of God's sake. He can do whatever the hell he wants as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. But C, it was like, of course, he's been suffering with the heart attacks and everything like that over the past decade or so. So the health issues would have been a bit of a setback, but it's it's so bizarre because like when you look at the legacy that Black Star will inevitably leave, it is the perfect send off. It's basically just like it's it's like a morning covered in celebration of his life, and he's absolutely fine and he's accepted that, and nothing can be more perfectly um, crafted than the video for Lazarus. Mm. It's just kind of like, well, what do you say? It's just kind of like the final curtain call, and there's millions and millions and millions of people worldwide just giving them a round of applause, and it is exactly what they were doing in Brixton yesterday. And I think it was beautiful, absolutely yeah. beautiful. I think I think it's that might be yeah, maybe one of, one of the reasons why it's had even, you know, such a, a bigger impact than we even expected is, you know, like I think the the only time I can think of anything kind of similar musically from an artist, which is you know, it's passed away. It was um, Freddie Mercury with uh, yes, yeah. the show must go on. I think that's the the only thing you can kind of compare it to, really. Um, not many artists manage to give a kind of musical send off, and I think that makes it you know all the more kind of powerful. The fact they can do that, and you know, people will remember these this album and and these mm-hmm. songs. I feel that is, I do also feel that it's legacy. It's just. It's just one of those, because it's been a very tough year for the music communities worldwide in the past year, what with ha- stuff happening in like Paris and, you know, just, just like general things, you know, just little things, industry-wise, personally, socially, it's all ties in. But this is one of those, and the same with uh, Lemmy's passing as well, it's one of those rare instances where the amount of respect and gratitude all over the world is actually recognised and everyone just comes in together and it's actually like, listen, you know, we don't care about what's happened in the past, we don't care about what kind of background you come from, we're here to celebrate the life of someone that's actually uh, given so much to their artistic endeavours to mm-hmm. give to us. Those are like the gifts that we, you know, hold. And the thing with David Bowie is that he made it okay to, uh, in the cultural um in, in the cultural sense, I guess, um, made it okay to be yourself. Care doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. You know, he done things that always push the envelope in terms of uh, sexuality, in terms of um, you know, fashion, music, um, just everything. He was basically the personification of what we all strive to be in terms of being different and being able to step above the monotony and say this is who I am and I'm damn proud of who I am. Mm. He's, a, he's, a, he's a role model on so many levels. Oh yeah, so many people have taken incredible. influence, haven't they? Obviously mm. Marilyn Manson is a prime one. Lady Gaga is obviously huge Berry fan. That's so obvious. Mm. You know, look yeah. at the front cover of the Fame album. It's called cool. David, yeah. David Bowie 
all, all over it. One, one thing I was going to mention on a slightly different note, which I'm uh, I'm sure Bowie would would find hilarious, is um, the amount of um, random people that have been pulled out of the woodwork to honour his um, his passing, such as um, his landlord from about. 1968 what? and uh, and his milkman, which have both uh, been interviewed for either newspapers. Okay, you've got to be on this, but I had no idea about this. Yeah, Milk- I saw it, I saw it earlier. Um, I was just oh, this is great, isn't it? His former landlord, who's you know, got quotes like, "Yeah, he seemed like a lovely guy at the time." You know, <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure Bowie would fully appreciate this as well. I bet he would look and be like, "What is going on?" It's, it's weird, isn't it? It's like, what, what do you ask the milkman? Like, did he like skimmed or semi skimmed? <laughs> you, you know, just like what do you ask a milkman? You know, about I don't know. That's just kind of like saying, for example, like if if you pass away tomorrow, we're going to interview your electrician just to see if you how much money you put on your get on your electric. I'm yeah. just I'm just dragging up it's the Milkman just... article just to see what he had said. Apparently, right? Um, he said he was a nice man, <laughs> nice man, and he had time for people. And he said, uh, when I started my milk round, they said, will you please deliver the milk around the back of the house because the guy living there thinks he's going to be a rock star. So when I delivered milk there, I went to the back garden, and all these musicians would be there smoking cigarettes and playing guitar. <laughs> yeah, and it. it it was a really nice time. He was a nice guy. He had a quiet voice and he had time for people. The quote of David Bowie's Milkman um, from, the <laughs> summer, from the summer of 69. <laughs> it's just all too surreal, isn't it? <laughs> well, well, we were talking about artists that have been influenced by Bowie, haven't we? Mm. Well, but, Suede. Suede. Okay, well, here, here's your chance. Yeah, I mean, you, you guys want... keep... As much as you guys keep mocking me, I've actually... <laughs> You know, I'm able to shoehorn this one in with all fairness. I mean, um, if you look at sort of, especially their first two albums, they both had very Bowie kind of influences in two different complete worlds. I mean, first album, that's straight up Ziggy and um, Diamond Dogs all the way, um, just put into a bit more of a 90s template. Um, And then... Dogman style was completely the theatricality and um, introverted um, invertedness um, in terms of like the personality and the lyricism um, that was on the same album, you know, on the Bowie's end, it completely mirrored low and lodger and the Berlin trilogy. It's mm. that same theatricality, tension and um, dramatism. There's so many artists for the nineties who were inspired. It's, um, kind of goes from saying you know is there an artist who wasn't in some sense mm. inspired I, by Bowie I think, I, like, think. Sorry, I think like the output of the diversity of artists all over the world at the moment that are paying tribute to him actually just goes to show how a I, I guess a rock a pop artist a rock artist at the core of it was able to influence so many different people from all walks of life whether it be uh, whether it be from hard rock to hip hop or indie or even electronic music, it's uh, you know obviously with like Nine Inch Nails, um, it's it's absolutely mind blowing to think how much one person has changed the music industry, not just uh, the music industry, but also just uh, the world in a cultural sense to a very degree. But it makes you also think if one person is able to do that, then people like who are involved in the music industry um, and want to actually really make it actually sorted their shit out for once and stopped thinking about moolah they actually went by an artistic integrity and actually doing something not only that instills uh, your own peace of mind but gives something creatively to their core audience there would be so much change within like uh, what we receive as musical or artistic products you know, I think more artists need to think more like Bowie. They need to act more like Bowie. Because he set an example. He set a standard for what artistic integrity should be. And I think a lot of musicians and a lot of artists out there today could really take a big old... Can I, 